All right, Phoenix, let's do it. And we are back, New Jack Thriller City, man. Hey, I got one of my player partners inside the house, man. Uh, yo, this is one of the, the dopest comedians I've ever uh, seen in my life. Um, uh, he's a comedian's comedian. He done been on every show that a comedian ever wanted to be on, from top to bottom, even Arsenio Hall, when <laughs> shit came back. <laughs> and Def when Jam, the shit came back. <laughs> Def Jam, <laughs> goddamn, uh, Bad Boys of Comedy, Comic View, uh, Who's Got Jokes, uh, The Heart of the City, uh, Comic View, When the Shit Came Back Again. again. Uh, d d he's so well accomplished. He's been doing big shows for a long time. Somebody mm -hmm. I've always looked up to. He fights really well. Uh, he has anger management problems and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And he's, <laughs> he's just a really, has a heart of gold. Has a heart of gold, and he get them hoes. Y'all give it up for <laughs> Kelly K Dub Walker, what? all the way from what? Orange Mile. <laughs> what? What's get them hoes, man? Why you do that in there? Dog, no, niggas gotta know that you got these kids out here, boy. Man, I, I, <laughs> niggas got to know that you, you dog. It ain't just about one girl. <laughs> no. It ain't about two girls. <laughs> it ain't about three girls. Nigga don't even stay. They don't even stay in the same state. No, that's, that's how not. you know. They all live in the same state except for one. They all, he didn't got all the girls to move here. No, I didn't. They all lived here. Okay, they was already there. <laughs> Except for the first one. They was from, all of them were hey, from. Hey, man, don't do no more intros for me okay. no more, man. Hell no. Nah. Your, your uh -oh. intro was full of bullshit, bro. It was good uh -oh. shit, then it was bullshit, okay. then it was great what, what shit. What portion I had to left out? And oh, I ain't going to go over there with you again. Okay, because it, it, that'll be like reliving it. Yeah, reliving and, the and, intro. And got you. Got Hell no. Nah. And I'll be saying the parts that you didn't fuck with, too. Yeah, you. so yeah. don't even guess them. Okay, got you. So uh, even if we had did the parts that I had... That you did approve, <laughs> and it would be like highlighting the ones that you did. Gotcha. I understand. Okay, uh, uh, dog. Just to set the record straight, um, it's Memphis. Uh, but I did, but then I heard Mississippi. I'm born in Mississippi. Born in Mississippi. I'm raised in Memphis. Raised in Milwaukee. Pretty much raised in Atlanta. All good cities. Well, I guess yeah. They was all great. They all contributed. Yeah. Who I am. All that shit you said and some of that shit you lied about, yeah, yeah. that's the shit that, you know, it come from that. Okay, the, the heart of gold, what, what was that? Man, get the fuck out of okay. here. We not going, <laughs> we not finna start from the top. <laughs> you gonna work your way back so to I that try, bullshit. So I try to go back. <laughs> he tried to. Get back in that mouse hole. That's what we not gonna do, no, Yeah, yeah, no. I, I understood, understood. That motherfucking mouse hole. Yeah, hey, um, uh, 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 comedy, how you even get started doing comedy, dog? Shit, I started in Milwaukee, man. In Milwaukee? Yeah, I was at Washington High School. I, w I went to school with Latrell Sprewell nephew, Cecil Sprewell. And he the one really took me down there to this drama. You believed the nigga when he told you that he Man, they had already said I was clad clown. No, he is some kid doing shit. Because his name was Sprewell? Because you know how niggas be doing that. Yeah, but no, it wasn't that. Latrell from up there, they all look alike. All of them got the little tall, little, like, fair faces. Mm. You know, little mice face. Little meerkat face. Yeah, yeah. You know, little prairie dog face. They got the little same type of little face. Yeah, that, that, that's got to be him, man. You got to be yeah. him. Yeah, my hamster face. You know that little face. Mm, mm, mm. Little gerbil face. Washington High School. Yeah, Washington High School. They, they used to call it Herpes High. I went there. Why they used to call it that? I don't know. It was there before I got there. It was there after I left. That's okay. I know. What did you leave with? <laughs> no, I left with a diploma that talk. <laughs> I got the diploma and got on. I left them herpes right on back there. Yeah, most you got voted most likely not to get herpes. <laughs> no, man, I voted class clown. In, okay, that's in that. Mississippi. And you got you got class clown in Mississippi and in Milwaukee. No, I didn't get class clown in Milwaukee. I got class clown in Mississippi. Gotcha. Okay, I thought you repeated the grade. Or something. I did repeat a grade. Oh, which one? Which, which one? I ain't gonna really tell you, man, because because you don't. I just found out how old a nigga was two years ago, and I thought we knew each other. Yeah, that wasn't even two years ago. It's probably about a few months ago. <laughs> that shit pissed me <laughs> off. I'm like, so our whole friendship been a lie. No, well, don't talk to me like that. First and foremost, that's some <laughs> that's some slick. That shit was gay. Our whole friendship been a lie. Cut that shit out. Anyway, no, it hasn't. But. I'm not the same age I am. I didn't know. Are you older than me or am I older than you? I'm 42. I just turned 42. Yeah, I'm 47. 43, man. You thought you was older than me? 
Uh, I thought we was the same age. How the fuck we ain't twins? How the fuck we the same age? Because we, our, we was like at the same age at the same time. And we time never thought time. we, I never thought I was your age. I never thought I was older or younger. I just never thought I was your age. You just never age. thought about me getting my birthday at all. <laughs> no, it ain't that. I just knew we wouldn't. <laughs> nigga, this nigga say thought. How you just, how you just know I a nigga knew, not older I know we ain't the same age. If anything, we, if we is, that's cool. But I ain't thinking that shit. You don't just never walk up to the nigga and say, I wonder if we the same age. <laughs> no, I never have. I've never walked up to no motherfucker and asked him, was we the same age? You never you never went up to a nigga and said, hey, when's your birthday? No, I ain't never asked unless it's his party or some shit. You know, I'd be like, was your birthday today or was it yesterday or last week? Something like that. But I ain't never been like, hey, Jack, when is your birthday? Because I ain't never gave a fuck. Because ain't nothing. I don't care about it. You do. You should keep up with it. True, true. true. When is your birthday, though? June 9th. You just had a birthday. Yeah, June 9th. What'd you do? I had a birthday roast. I had a uh, insane karaoke, man, you know, at uh, Vanity. And I went down. Hey, we was just talking about Vanity earlier. Yeah, I went down. I love Vanity. What night did you go? Thursday night. Oh, that's okay. Uh, that's a safe night. Slid in there about uh, yeah. uh, 10.30 like Jackie Robinson. Okay, 10.30. Yeah. Yeah, because the freaks come out at night in Vanity. Yeah, man, they they come out. Well, I don't know. They come out every night anywhere, right? Yeah, not just yeah. The vanity. The v- vanity got some other rules going on there, though. They do. Yes, sir. They got the little bottom. Then my vanity right here, right? The uh, the one off the Cheshire Bridge. No, no, that no, I ain't talking about no vanity. Oh, not that one. Oh, oh, you talking? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, yeah. what is you talking? That's not about? what he was talking about. He ain't talking about that. No damn Tokyo Valentino. I said, freak ass nigga, take them glasses off, bro. That, no, that ain't, that's not what we talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. You talking about it, though. But oh, I, okay. Got you. Hey, edit that part out. That nigga said some shit go down. And yeah, go. okay. Giving yeah. me that nasty look. This nigga ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I, I, I did do shit like shit go down. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, no, nigga, I sang karaoke, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we was doing was singing. That's it. We just sang karaoke. Didn't okay. know freaky shit go down in that bitch, nigga. Got you. This is a whole. I had the wrong V. Yeah, man. Valentino. <laughs> nigga, it was Tokyo. It's, so you say it's Tokyo Valentino? <laughs> Hell no. I, I've been calling this shit vanity for the whole time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been sending niggas to the wrong spot. Damn. <laughs> That's some bullshit. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, I guess they've been finding it because the word is getting around. Yeah, you keep doing that freaky shit. They're going to let your ass in every time. They don't give a fuck what you call them. Hey, bro. But you know what I'm talking about, though, right? You been there? No. Okay. I've never been there. Okay, you should know go. What you talking about? We should e- go. Edit that part out. That <laughs> <laughs> nigga said that. Molly Pocket, let's go. <laughs> I like that. We are back with Jack, Beauty of the Week. And we Molly got World. Yes. Oh, you got some things in here today. We, we do. Who are we talking to today, Molly? This is Yanni. She's a tall one. She yeah. is. She's t- How tall are you? Maybe like 5'9 without the heels. Oh, she, she okay. my height. She my height, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. You're, I don't mind looking at you. Okay, if you... Is, mm-hmm. That's cool. Yeah, That's yeah. cool. You can roll, Molly. Where you from? I'm from... <laughs> <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. We got another New Jersey. Okay. Uh, Montclair. Montclair. They yeah. got to win like a Montclair University or there, right? Yup, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I performed there before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. What's your sign, girl? I'm a Libra. Libra. Libra, is that the... The scale. The scale. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah. Knew she was going to say away. <laughs> Come on, now. And Yanni, what do you do? I'm an up-and-coming artist. I make music, and I'm also a model. Okay. That's what's up. Yes. What kind of music you do? You, you, you a rapper? I you? rap, sing. You rap and sing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, you a ringer. Okay. I like that. Oh, I'm going to start using that. Come on now. It's, a ringer. it's yours. I like that. You came that. up with it. Okay. That's a vibe. Um, we, we need a couple bars, man. Yeah, I want a couple bars for sure. Bars is insane. Bars. Y'all can't do me like that. I just started making music in January. <laughs> she said she just started. Hey, when she come back. When you I'll come be back. Ready. I'll be ready. I'll be when she come back. Yeah, You'll yeah. be ready when you come back. What's, what's, your, your, what's your rap name? Yanni. 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 Yeah. Got you. Mm-hmm. Like the thing? Like the- oh, like it. How you spell it? Yeah. Y A N N I. 
Okay, so it's not. That's why you smelling so not good. Oh, thank you. Ooh, got that yanni yanni. Yanni smelling right. I like that. Um, so I got some random questions for you. Random. Random time. Um, what are some traits that the person who raised you passed down to you? Mm, I was okay. My mom raised me, so I seen her go get it, like out the mud. So you know, she kind of instilled that into me. So I, everything I do was kind of like I was really raised by like I would say survival. Mm. So I had to like learn how to get into certain places, do certain things to get ready to go. So I mean, it's paying off. Okay. I think- like Mowgli like from the Jungle that. Book. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, if you could sleep with any celebrity, who would it be? Ooh. Jack Taylor. <laughs> oh, I'm not um, saying it because I'm right here. I don't know. No, I would, for real. Who, who for real, though? Um, probably Tusi. Tusi two time. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, Tusi. Mm-hmm. Hey. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Got you. He's but a singer. I'm on stage right now. You know that song. Mm-hmm. Singing. Mm-hmm. Favorite song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That, oh, that one. Yeah. yeah that one. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Um, ooh, what are three things on your bucket list? Hmm. Skydiving, okay. swimming with sharks, ooh. and a third. I haven't really thought about those. Those are like the two. Do you have any like sexual uh, bucket list you things? You can't have no high blood pressure with her. <laughs> Probably a threesome. A threesome? You haven't mm-hmm. done a threesome yet? No. I was shook. It's Molly, can you, can you help out? Uh, I could definitely help her out. <laughs> Molly got some friends. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> That's, That's funny up. as hell. And hold then, on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. So, uh, a, what, what's a threesome to you before? Oh, two I, girls and a guy. Oh, okay. We're not doing two guys and a girl. That's All right, crazy. Cool. <laughs> um, okay. Can you rank these? <laughs> can you rank these things in order of importance? Money, love, or family? I mean, in, the, in those order. I would say family, mm-hmm. and I then love. love, and then money. I feel that. For that, okay, and then, um, last thing if you had a superpower, what would it be? I would probably be invisible so I could just like mess with like my exes and just get on their nerves for real. I feel that mm-hmm. you still be thinking about them, niggas. just like trip them, maybe you okay. know, something. <laughs> Something. You vindictive, though. Okay. You still be on their pages and stuff, too, don't mm, you? They be on mine, though. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Flip it over. Mm-hmm. Okay. And speaking of pages, where can they follow you at? High off Yanni. Oh, actually, it's high off underscore Yanni on Instagram. You, you selling weed? No. Like, people are high off. Like, oh, I get that, addicted. Uh, natural, you know? Natural. natural. Yeah. 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 Okay. It ain't you know? always about drugs. Yeah. Not, no. Even my name's like a drug, but I don't do drugs. I feel that. Yeah. It is a drug. It you is a drug. Okay. <laughs> I keep on thinking about the butter the whole time. <laughs> That's what's up. Uh, okay, well, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having Jack me. Jack Beauty of the Week. Let's Yay. go. Yanni. 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 Hey, <laughs> uh, at your rose, did the niggas give you the business, bro? Uh, are you were you happy with your rose? Yeah, they did. They dug in there, man. Last year they didn't. Last year I had a lot of comics there, but them niggas just sat around and looked and wanted to say some. You know, I I, I appreciate when you be like, yeah, man, what you did for me or whatever. But nigga, kick my ass. Come, man. that ain't what they, you, you want to hear that shit. I don't want to hear that shit, nigga. Yeah. Think of something, nigga. Nav Green over there, them niggas got down. Yeah. Robin Nav ain't gonna Rob, let you down. Robin and man, that nigga Nav Green, Nav Green, crazy. He said, yeah. He said the craziest shit of the night to me. What he say? Uh, somebody said when I get old. Uh, they said no. I think Nav said when I get old, ain't none of my kids gonna take care of me. That's and he said except for the one with the glasses. That's funny. I believe that. And he said, uh, that's fucked up for you to believe it. I believe it. He, he looks anyway, like very responsible. Nav said a nigga gonna take his glasses off and walk past me like, I don't see it, Dad. I don't <laughs> see it. <laughs> <laughs> then I think Food Stamp was Nav. Somebody said something. Nigga yelled out, hey, man, that's his favorite son, you son of a bitch. I was like, these niggas is ignorant, bro. Food Stamp like, ain't gonna let you down either. Man, he ain't gonna let you down. Man, them niggas, they went hard. They said some more shit. Yeah. Them niggas went there. I ain't going to tell the rest of it. Hey, proper roast etiquette. How a roast supposed to go 
and whatnot, just so niggas know. Because niggas be, be getting mis roast misconstrued and shit and making their own little nigga versions of roast. But how a roast supposed to go, k -Dub? Well, roasting in the streets, in a comedy club, I can tell you the best way to do them where they'll be dope. Please. I normally go up if I'm if I'm if I am part of the roast, I bring a dope ass host that know how to do it, that's kinda like trained to do it. Not just a motherfucker that they friends with. Let that yeah. nigga roast. Let that nigga be one of the roasters. Don't don't let his friend. Let a motherfucker that know how to do it, that can control the crowd, mm -hmm. that knows how to set it up. And what I do is personally, I can tell you what I do, and I guess you'll know what I probably delegate another motherfucker to do. Okay. But what I do is I go up, like let's say I'm roasting uh double D or somebody. Yeah, yeah. I go up and do a little time and talk about it. Might hit WD one or two times, not nothing hard. And do some comedy, just keep it a regular comedy show. Talk about a roast, but be be steady doing a regular comedy show. Bring up three, four comedians, and then steady talk about the roast in between, and let the comedians say they little bits and bits. And then after that, I be like, y'all ready for the roast? Then I bring them up, I bring the roasty up, set them down, and then I. Talk about them a little bit, and then I bring the roasters up, and I talk about them as I'm bringing them up, and I just keep, you know, hitting every one of them as I bring them up to get them riled up a little bit, and then I bring up my first roaster, and he comes up. He shouldn't be doing material or nothing like that. He should be coming up. You don't do material. He should be coming up and roasting. If you do material, <laughs> I'd have some do it. I had plenty do it. <laughs> and bomb and bomb. Yeah, they'll go up and start doing their jokes. And then say a little bit and get out of there. And I used to be like, bro, why you keep doing your jokes? And they'd be like, that's what he told me to do. Nigga, you know not, ain't nobody told you that. But you let everybody else roast. It should go all night. Mm -hmm. It should go all night. Because some people going to get off real hard and some people not. And you make fun of that. Is there rules in a roast? In a, in a proper roast, is there rules? In a proper roast, is there rules like, no, I can't think of none. Besides, don't be trying to grab the mic and let people finish their shit. Let people finish what they saying. Don't get upset and don't take it personal. Definitely don't take it personal. You know, don't even, don't begin to take it personal because if somebody roasting you anyway, that's love. Because somebody asked me after my roast, they were like, you think someone was getting their rocks off, you know, trying to say shit they won't really want to say? I said, no, the motherfuckers that got something to say ain't there, ain't here. Everybody here, because that's what they that's what they doing, celebrating me anyway. So whoever shows up, whoever don't show up, them the motherfuckers who I wouldn't want saying nothing about me. I mean that you know, if you was to do a roast right now, I'd be there. Cause I I mean not one because I know you because shit, I goddamn I gotta celebrate you too, type shit. Roast your ass, I know you. Plus there don't be that many roasts. So I'll be liking the roast. Anybody roast. I roast anybody, people I don't know. Yeah. Now, and now, is it a good thing when some like people don't know you at the rose? What you mean? Like, for instance, on, on the Tom Brady on the Tom Brady uh, rose, right? Yeah, he didn't know a lot of them niggas that was roasting him. Yeah, it don't matter though. Yeah, but that yeah, they them. It was I was thinking to myself when I'm I'm, I'm watching it. This is perfect. So you kind of almost supposed to get a couple of niggas that just don't know you to just straight up professional in order to get this off right. They ain't always got to know you. They ain't got no, they ain't always got to know you. Plus, the Tom Brady Rose had one of the greatest writer teams to write a lot of that. True, shit. You true. Know what I mean, that's another thing. It was gonna be funny anyway. They had, yeah. they had a lot of great writers writing a lot of their jokes. Mm. So it's gonna be funny. You spend got you spent you come to Atlanta and spend a million dollars on some writers. You gonna get some good shit out of Atlanta. Too? You damn right. For any for any goddamn body. Come to spend matter. a million dollars if you want to. Yeah. It's yeah. Good. So that's that's kind of easy. I mean, it's it's definitely funny as fuck, but it's. Easy to do with a chunk of change. Yeah, one hundred percent. Now, is there anything that you is uh, is off limits when it comes to your roast or you roasting that you just ain't gonna do or you just don't want to hear? Shit, I can't think of nothing, man. That's off limits, man. Like, 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 I can't think of nothing. I can, I really can't. Now, I just heard somebody just tell me just now that you can't talk about my mama. Shit. Shit, every time I hang up on Tip, I tell Tip, tell your mama to I left my uh, I left my sweater on the end of her bed. I talk about your mama, man. I'm gonna get your mama. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about your mama. 
<laughs> it's, it's classic black people etiquette, right? Yeah, man, because we know that's love, too. You only you only say that. I wouldn't say that to to, to this guy here because I, I don't got I, we ain't got that type of relationship. But with somebody I have that type of relationship for, that's love mm. because it's just really just poking you. Mm. That's all it is. Your mama, my best friend. I gotta tell him his mama. I tell him, hold on, bro. It's your mama on the other end. I mm. just got to. <laughs> now, what about running trains on people, mama? <laughs> Can you run a can you run a train on somebody, mama? I won't run a train. I won't be in no room with no nigga, man. So I ain't gonna run no train. Ain't like I'm gonna be falling in love with her. I ain't gonna go in there. Shit. No, I'm talking about inside the joke, not in real life. Oh yeah, I would say anything. <laughs> I yeah. thought you was trying to ask me do I want no. a train? Hell no, 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 no. I don't have nobody, mama, on deck. You will I'm... ask some shit like that. No, nah, come on, you know me. Yes, you will. You know me, man. I, that's why I said it. Because well, I know you. If you ain't doing that later, man, would you like to go run a train with me? <laughs> Hell yeah, no, nigga. That's what I'm saying. Because I know you serious. You played it like you didn't say it, but that's what you meant. No, I'm, you I'm, meant I'm, that I'm crazy not interested shit. in having sex with you in the room. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like it if, if it was a. You see where this conversation going? That's no, what I'm saying. But you see what I'm saying, though? Like, Hell no, I don't see. I, and that's I, what I'm saying. We're on the same page as far as trains we go. We're on the same page at all because when you brought it up, that's the reason I said no because I could have easily been still thought you was talking about the mama joke shit, but you really on some serious shit with running the train. Nah. Why? Yeah. Nah. Yes, that's where you talk. Yeah. I know how you talk, and I know where you're talking about. You know how I, talk. <laughs> I know your segue. Boy, you a fool. <laughs> you stupid. Hey, boy. I know this nigga psyche. He ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you trick the people, but you ain't gonna trick me. You hey, son bro, of a bitch. I, I, <laughs> I know I'm a sexy man. You know I'm a sexy man. But before you understand how sexy I really am, you first have to understand my sexuality. <laughs> you feel me? We went from talking about a nigga mama to his motherfucking sexuality. Nigga, you a nasty, diabolical, dastardly. Dastardly. <laughs> dastardly. <laughs> you ain't shit, bro. Hey, we oh we we, we was on um Nav show last week. And Nav uh he brought he brought up this he he brought up something that he had been wanting to ask me for a minute. <laughs> so How long is a minute? Story. I told him the story. How yeah, long he been doing it? Story he asked now me. Now I've been doing it about eleven years. Yeah, I probably told him when I met met him. Yeah, when you met me. When I met him, I probably told him the story. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody mention your name? I tell him the same story. What, what's the story? Of how I met you, motherfucker. Yeah, how how was this, how did you meet? <laughs> well, I didn't really meet you. I let you went on about your fucking business after that. <laughs> I just just kept seeing you, and that's you just happened. Like I just seeing you, kept seeing you, bro. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It was now time we shook hands and said you're a good nigga or nothing. We just was around each other, bro. Like Them were good times. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I, I, like, you might have had separate good times. I might have had mine. But what happened was, I'm in a comedy club. I'm an amateur, man. I've been doing comedy now at this point probably about four months. I I just can remember assigning that list. Is it like 98? No, bro, this was, I started in July of 01. Okay, 01, okay. So you might have, you you might have mosed it, you might have scurried your ass, you might have slid sideways in there like a crab probably around about 02. What was that, about 02? Some... Yeah, about 02. So I remember you coming there, you dressed like Raphael when he went out by himself when he put on a little hat and a trench coat. <laughs> Raphael Sadiq? No, Raphael the Ninja Turtle, nigga. When he put on a motherfucker. <laughs> When they put when a ninja turtle used to put on a trench coat and disguise themselves like a regular human with the hat in it. That's how you came in that bitch, dressed like Raphael when he got his ass whooped. Anyway, you come in there with the trench coat and the hat on. And I seen you go by and I wonder who the fuck is this nigga. Cause we amateurs, we look at everybody. Then you went over there toward the list. I said, this nigga signed that list. So I went up, did my thing. You signed the list. You did, you went up. You had a trench coat on. And you was on stage, you cracked a, a joke. Joke didn't work and you didn't care. <laughs> shit, this shit, you, you didn't give a fuck about that joke because the joke was just uh, just your segue to yeah, do what you wanted to do. It was your excuse to get up there to do the next shit you did because the nigga 
Crack the damn joke. He said, shit. Knock, knock. The crowd said, who's there? That nigga said, hit that shit, DJ. Man, that nigga snatched his trench coat off. Man, that nigga had on thong. The nigga started gyrating to the crowd. Like, I'm talking about hard. I'm talking about real hard. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I thought, he, I thought it was, I didn't know what it was. I thought I was there on the wrong night. I, I didn't know what the fuck he was doing, but he was, he was just throwing his thigh. And he, when he took the trench coat off, he threw it behind him. Like, you know how a nigga like Count Dracula slaying that motherfucking coat off his shoulder? That nigga threw that motherfucker off his shoulder and he went to popping. It's like he sprayed mace in the crowd. Motherfuckers got up, started moving out the front of the crowd. I'm telling you, like, yeah, do, do a fucking smoke. Hey, listen. When I tell you, no, let me finish. Yes, like the nigga was just, he was hitting that, like he was popping so fucking hard on that stage. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga, bro? Like, <laughs> like I didn't know. Like, it's something like, really, if you ever see this shit, you'll leave. But as a comedian, you want to document it. So I'm standing there like, man, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the manager. They were like, I don't know what the fuck going on. So that was, he did his shit. But what the crazy part was, like I said, I'm documenting this shit. This nigga danced and looked at the crowd and said, yeah, that's how you do that shit. Right? This at a comedy show, Uptown Comedy Corner. This at a comedy show, right? I understand a poet coming in. So what was crazy, even worse than that, a nigga turned around and go get his jacket behind him. He had threw his trench coat off. He had to turn around and go get it. Nigga turned around with the ass in the air to the crowd and everything, man. Nuts, everything to the crowd, man. Thong on. Thong wasn't big enough. Man, thong on, ass to the crowd. Got off, put a trench coat on, put a hat on, stayed at the back and waited. Like he was waiting around for some shit. I'm like, nigga, go home, nigga. <laughs> man, I know y'all in the comment probably say, why you know? Man, I was there, bro. Like, I was fucking 20 years old or some shit, bro. That was my first time ever seeing a nigga infiltrate the strip, strip I mean, inf, inf, infiltrate the comedy club and strip. <laughs> I didn't infiltrate the strip club and did comedy, but I ain't never seen a stripper infiltrate. <laughs> infiltrate. So I can't even say it because it got me fucked up. Right? But that's my introduction to you, man. Did, but did you see, you forgot to tell them how much money they threw on the stage. Because I didn't see none. That's the only reason why I didn't tell them. It's not that I forgot. It's just I didn't see nothing. You didn't see no money on the stage. You didn't either, man. You don't remember me like raking it all up with my legs and No, I remember you doing your leg doing a butterfly. I don't remember <laughs> you doing your legs doing nothing else. I told you <laughs> the hardest butterfly I ever seen. Hey, pumps mm. and the bumps. Hey, MC Hammer style. You remind me of my Jeep R. Kelly, man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was tearing that shit up. roll. Yeah. In that motherfucker. God damn it, sweet. Go. Let me see you Tootsie roll. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah. man, that was man, strange. I had some moves. No, you didn't. That shit was trash. The whole <laughs> thing. I swear, it was, you a daredevil, but it was some trash ass daredevil shit. I, I, I wasn't a good stripper. No, nah, it ain't even that I'm judging you, but it was just it, the whole present, everything about it, man. That, that little, just. Do you Man. remember what song I danced? Let me think. I don't remember, dog. You <laughs> say you never had a good <laughs> bang. <laughs> I can freak you like you want. And then round and round we go. Round and scrub the ground. And I hit that goddamn been, Chinese bro. split. It could have been, bro. Yeah. Down, 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 down. Yeah. Down, down, down. Big little <laughs> hoe. <laughs> bro. Yeah. I don't fucking know, bro. I don't know what it was. <laughs> hey, do you remember that one time <laughs> where I, I was booked at Uptown? Um, this was on. Um, yeah, I do. You know what I'm talking? <laughs> Tell me when they booed you. You when they booed the shit out I don't of me. Think, I don't think you ever invited that many of your family members and classmates and everything out to a show. I think that's the most. I think that show there. You probably had more family members and loved ones, and you know. You know, you had Antoinette Pride, that girl you this put all it, on yeah. there. Yeah, that, that's the one he married that he thought he was going to fall in love with. That I told him, I was like, but yeah, and then he said, no, Dub, you hating. Call me a hater. Next thing you know, he hit me back, tell me, yeah, man. I look in her DM, man. I'm seeing this. I'm saying, I said, nigga, I told you you wasn't shit. Not her, but you. 
you ain't shit. That's why I knew she was going to cheat on you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> she cheated on it. Then she cheat on you. If she cheat on you, say, yay, yay. Yay, yay. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So, it yeah, was- but anyway, everybody was at the show that he uh did. In love. He did the show. He had everybody. He invited everybody. Am I lying? No, you're not. He invited everybody. Yes. That nigga did his show. Of course, he didn't strip this time, but he- I had my stripper outfit on, too. I you was, had it on under this shit. That's what I had it on under Isaac this Isaac Hayes chain vest. Yeah, the chain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the nigga did the show and uh, went on stage. He did a few jokes. The nigga ran off stage, ran through the green. Ah, you remember? <laughs> the nigga ran off stage at Uptown. You know how Uptown was set up. You can run off stage and run in the green room door and run back out the curtain. This nigga did that shit. And he came and said some jokes. But ran off stage again. And by the time he went in the green room, they started booing. When he came back through the curtain, he felt them boos coming out. They started. I was like this. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> they Remember boo. That nigga commercial where that nigga yeah. was sitting in that goddamn lazy boy chair. <laughs> 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 when I tell you, they, they booed that nigga ass to death. He tried to crack some more jokes. They kept booing. They did not want to see the buffoonery. They was done with him. He got off stage. I'm. I'm the type of comedian used to it, talking about you. He was born. coming to blaze me. I was in the Listen, I'm so I'm the comedian that's gonna talk about you. I'm gonna talk about you if you bomb. I walked in there, I saw that nigga face. I knew he was hurt when I seen real tears coming out of this fake eye. I said, that boy hurt, man. So I didn't talk about him. I said, bro, it's gonna be all right. And nigga said, you sure? I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I said, bro, fuck that crowd. Them just some haters out there. That nigga said, but it's my family and friends. I said, well, well, I all of your family. <laughs> he said, not all of them. I said, well, them motherfuckers that ain't, that's too. He said, but I saw some of my family booing. I said, nigga, listen, I'm not going to talk about that no more. But what I will tell you is it's going to be all right. <laughs> That nigga, that nigga stayed in the green room all night. Second show, they replaced him with another <laughs> comedian. Did the guy tell him no? They replaced him, but he still stayed in the green room all night. That nigga did not go home. You know when he left? When, that, when did I leave? I think it was that Tuesday, wasn't it? That Tuesday, yeah, I was there for like three days after that. Isn't yeah, it? you stayed in that motherfucker, <laughs> bro. You would not come out of that motherfucking closet. That nigga stayed in because you was embarrassed, man. You was a shit talker too. You a shit talker comedian. Yes, why not? You'll look upside a comedian here and say, nigga, you're not funny to me, nigga. You will you would do that. And you was doing that back then. We all were. I mean, yeah, we yeah, all yeah. were. It was it was it was, it was a, a, etiquette, proper discipline. Yeah, it was proper, definitely proper etiquette. So at that time when you was doing all that pointing and telling niggas they ain't shit. Yeah. And yeah. I was there. I was that old bat pulled up on your ass, man. You let Angel walk up, that bat walk right up. And I just didn't even give it to him. I said, fuck it. I said, I'll catch him. I ain't want I ain't no coward. I ain't want to catch him when he was down. I want to catch him when you got the highest self-esteem. Yeah. I want to catch him when you're ready. You know, we rose. We got some good ones online. Boy, you saved my life that night, man. Yeah, I know. You put your arm around me. I didn't put my arm around you. That ain't that's not what you did. Okay. No, I didn't. You was just talking to me from like, okay. From it was a distance. It was okay, all of the green room space in between us. Got Motherfucker okay. could have came in there and fought some dogs in between us. Yep, got you. Yeah. Yeah. Got you. Yep. I don't know why I keep remembering it a whole nother way. I guess that's what I wanted to think. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. It was a <laughs> lot more. Um, <laughs> even though it was a, uh, uh, intimate, it was still Not just intimate. as. It was all the space in between us. Nigga. We yeah. could have set a fire and neither one of us could have got none of the heat in between. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you ever been booed before, k Yeah, I've been booed twice. Really, three times, but it's twice. One time, first time I ever got booed. I probably have been doing comedy for about. I have been doing comedy probably about uh. Probably about uh, May. Probably I, that could be about. It either was like seven months or a year and seven months into it. I walk. Um, I think, shit, Ronnie Jordan. I think that was Ronnie Jordan went on stage. He's do that honey bun joke. That shit killed one night, and they brought me up right behind him. And as soon as I got on stage, 
a, a woman in the front row, she was fat. She said, you better be funny. Of course I had the attitude. Oh, I was shit. like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> and they just, the whole crowd started booing. And Sko was like, come on. Sko just can tell I was really, you know, upset. He yeah. just knew how I looked when I was kind. Because I was, like I said, I was about seven months into it. Because I wasn't used to you trying me. I still hadn't got past the fact that let them try you and don't be cussing them out. Because it was almost like you still can't try me. Come yeah. on. That was, that was me anyway. You can't try me. It ain't like I was ever a soft guy or let take, turn the cheek or whatever the fuck they say. But... uh. Second time was at Clark Atlanta. Third time was at Clark Atlanta. Sheesh. Clark Atlanta. Clark Atlanta is the two official booths that I got. Well, and what you, well, September twenty fourth, two thousand and four. And this is a college. College. And where you felt like you went wrong at a college? Saying the word faggot. Okay, that'll do it. I kept saying the word faggot on stage. Got you. And they got down started doing it. Got you. They started doing it. You you know doing it. You didn't know it was okay to be. They gay. was keying me. They was doing the key thing. It was no booing. They was doing. Oh, the it was the key. They did the key thing. Got you. What you what you rather have? Booze or keys? <laughs> that keys kind of they is it, irritating. The booze is like I've been saying that all my life. That key thing is irritating. It's very irritating. It's like a nigga instead of saying no, did it to you. Yeah. He be like fuck out of here, nigga. Yeah, yeah. So it was new and it was irritating. Yeah, yeah. I, I would definitely rather I, I take my booze. Yeah, give me my booze, man. I'm used to those. I don't want this new shit. Now, people ask me all the time, um, or when when that Will Smith shit happened, like to to this day, when you just meet a civilian off the street and everything that they hadn't done comedy, does that happen inside comedy clubs where you see somebody walk from the audience and uh, swing on a comedian? Have you ever seen that before? You ain't got to say who it was and stuff. It happened to me. To. Happened to me twice. In Clarksville, me and Sherman Golden, I got punched by an older guy. And they hit me right in the jaw. Bow, cut, cut. And they broke it right up. Sherman Golden was right there. And then in Memphis, uh, and they came on stage and swung and hit. You know, I got back, he might have caught me across the lip. I just can feel his fist a little bit, but it didn't do nothing. And I slammed his back out and beat the brakes off his head. The, old, the older nigga, I couldn't get him. As soon as we locked up, they broke it up. And they just was like, get here your money. And, just let, and I just went on, got in the car and left. That was in Clarksville, Tennessee, back in back in Ofo. Those that are dangerous times. That, that, that shit, Ofo. The boo in the motherfucking ass whooping happened that same year. <laughs> yeah, in Memphis, I whooped that nigga ass. Daryl Dan was standing right there. Prescott, that Prescott. Yeah, Prescott shit. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, yeah, it happens. Shit, I've seen, I've seen niggas get. White boy Ben, what's what? I think it was. Let me see. Wasn't that, wasn't that Ben Palmer that got slapped on stage? White boy Ben Palmer got slapped on stage, and then uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, Gabe, Gabe then got beat up on stage. <laughs> yeah, we talked. Gabe about Hart, <laughs> director. <laughs> Gabe was comedy. notorious. Yeah, for God. <laughs> and he Gabe, didn't give a fuck. They took Gabe. Gabe was, they say Gabe was still holding the mic while he had his legs pulling it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, they, so, Gabe was getting wishbone in that motherfucker. They said Gabe, <laughs> nigga whooped Gabe ass in that. Said, they said Food Stamp was in there. Food Stamp and Nard got in the fight in the comedy club. He at Go Town Comedy Club. Nard left his shoe. I said, nigga, I, what the hell? Why you leave a shoe, nigga? Hey, you hey, you know some funny shit about that, that uh, the Nard thing. He said, Nard never liked me because <laughs> he thought that I was helping Food Stamp jump him. The whole time, and where, I wasn't even at the club. Where, where you were? I wasn't there. I heard the same thing. This nigga trying to feel a lot 20 years later. You did help Snap. Yeah, I, I wasn't you there. You probably was supposed to. <laughs> 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 you didn't put it on your resume, you and Snap jumped no, hard. That shit crazy, bro. <laughs> That nigga jumped. And uh, I never knew why this nigga did not like me. He wanted to kill me, man. Man, he wanted to kill me. <laughs> I didn't. We we didn't get to the bottom of it till uh, uh, Uptown Comedy Club, the one that was um not where it's at now, the one that was Marietta uh, Street, do, do, not Marietta Street. It's the the one that was after Marietta Street, Porsche and Hateville, uh, Porsche. Yeah, Porsche. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, right off of Central. Exactly. Yeah. We were in, we was in we were backstage um, as after the show me him a little baller and Angelo, 
And and um, I was like, why the fuck you ain't never like me? He said, because you had you had jumped on me and shit and blah, 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 and whatnot with food stamp. I said, no, the fuck I didn't. I don't really believe that because you ain't never really. Let me see. I've seen you get into it with a girl before. This nigga, I ain't yeah. never. This, <laughs> no, I didn't. I've never seen you. <laughs> Yeah, no, I lying. Yeah, no, I lying. You ain't, you won't bust a great with a pair of cleats on doing a Michael Jackson span. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Jack Thriller got all the muscles. He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna, a friendly not that fuck. you won't fight, but, but you a friendly guy, man. Yeah, yeah. He ain't, gonna, he ain't, he ain't gonna do all that. Yeah, and jump, let alone jump a nigga. Jump a nigga, no. I don't believe it. Come on, yeah. So he thought that shit was me, right? So, oh, uh, little baller, he ain't believe it either. He's like, man, I don't think Jack ain't, uh, uh, Honey Bun ain't never really did no shit like that. And then Angelo heard the shit too. And he was like, no, nah, uh, uh, Honey Bun would never do no shit like that. This nigga that I know. And then, so, <laughs> they call him, forward, they uh, call, two, day, two days later, they were, they were, I called Gabe. <laughs> I said, yo, Gabe, <laughs> man, guess why uh, Noah ain't never like me? He thought I jumped food stamp. He thought I, I, me and food stamp had jumped him back in the day and whatnot just because we used to hang out a lot. He said, "Yeah, we beat food. We beat Noah ass. It was fucking Gabe. Damn, it was Gabe, Gabe the whole on time. The phone saying that. Yeah, damn. Yeah, he said that in front of Noah on the phone. Uh, no, no, he didn't. He didn't say it in front of Noah. Noah, oh. Noah had called him a, uh, and uh, asked him about it after when I had told Noah about it. Cause I thought it was gonna be, I thought it was gonna be funny when I was like, "Man, it was Gabe the whole time." So he called Noah was getting closure. I didn't know he was about to die. So Gabe, Gabe was Gabe helped jump him. Yeah, Gabe did. Yeah, yeah. Damn. And okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, they, used, they was calling you Honey Bun, huh? Yeah. Okay. The, the, well, well, Honey Bun, come on. The, the nigga named Honey Bun ain't jumping nobody. No, he ain't jumping nobody. Yeah, come on. Um, so <laughs> let's 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 talk, but let's get back on comedy and whatnot, man. You got tip on the road, bro. Now he tells this story all the time, and he always give you his, his credit, man. From your perspective, that night and whatnot, because he said he you, he brought you 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 had brought him up out of spite. Yeah. Yeah. What was the spite? What was your chip on your shoulder about that? Well, the re- uh, well. He uh he always tried to dissect comedy. Tip always been a funny guy anyway. Funny as fuck. Super funny. Got some good jokes too. For everybody to say he ain't funny, I'd be like, nigga, your favorite fucking comedian ain't funny. You know what I mean? Like your favorite comedian really ain't funny. But the nigga funny. And he always was funny. And then I was just like, go on there, motherfucker. You do it. And then he went up there and did it, and that's it, pretty much. Cause it's always been a conversation. He was doing shows at his house. I was hosting the shows at his house. Bring I brought Odell, Ronnie Jordan, Erica Duchess. I brought all them before he ever knew who they really was like that. I was bringing them over there. Erica, Ronnie, shit, did, Tyler. Did you know that he was gonna come up when he uh when you brought him up or you just yeah, we was hoping I mean, just to the thing is he had all in 2015 he had already hosted my comedy special that we shot in Memphis. He went up and did like 15 minutes. Of talking and cracking jokes that day in Memphis, mm-hmm. April third, two thousand fifteen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it wasn't nothing. To, I knew if I caught man as loquacious as that nigga is, he could say something up there. Loquacious. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah. So he. I gonna, just found he, out what that meant like a year he gonna, ago. He gonna get up there and think of something. Yeah. Definitely. Period, and he might have did about thirty minutes. And, and when you see where he is now, you sold out shows, and you 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 you're there, you hosting um, from time to time, and you you uh, uh, featuring or uh, I'm hosting every time. Okay, you hosting the whole time. Where, where are you mentally when you seeing these sold out shows and it's there for comedy? They not there to see tip the uh, the rapper. Or my mentally. Yeah, where you, where you mentally like? This started from my my room. Yeah, uh, it's a blur, I can tell you that, because, shit, I be sometimes be thinking about how many shirts I'm going to sell after the show. So, for the most part, that's a blur. What we what we headed is what I be thinking about most of the time. I don't sit there and be in that little moment right there, because I I was back there with Michael Blackson. 
You don't overthink things. No, buddy. I be trying to get to the next level. You get over it. And then, like, hey, what we got going, what we got to do now? Yeah, and that's what we doing now. Mm-hmm. You know, so basically, Michael Blackson tour. The one of you on now. Mm-hmm. Like, I pretty much started that tour with social media. Mike contested this. I got Mike on social media. I was right there with that social media. And with that social media, me, Mike, me and Mike went on tour. Mm. And I stayed on tour with Mike for about five years. And she had learned a lot on that tour with Michael Blackson. And, and, and you are you a seasoned vet. What I, I so it's kind of hard for me to believe that what it's I learned, more that you can learn. Learn from Michael Blackson? That's yeah. the tours. How to how how to promote them, how to put them together, how to just okay. just a whole bunch of movement, how to move in cities too. Because gotcha. I didn't used to move like that before I was a touring comedian with Michael Blackson. How you used to move? Man, talking to them, promoting like, yeah, man, I'm 30 miles away. I'll be there in 20 minutes. All that old kind of country. And now promoter won't know I'm there till, I'm, till I let him know I'm there and I'm set and everything. He don't have no promoter to check on me. What's the psychology behind that? Because you don't really need to know nothing about me until I hit the show. Unless you're bringing me up back in to somewhere, somebody else picking up something. I just learned to move like a real professional. I had been doing it a long time, but I wasn't moving like that. Like I said, if a promoter book a room, I go in that bitch and go to sleep. Now a promoter not booking my room. So you saying accessibility, does that make um, mess up the money? What you mean? Mess when you're too accessible to the promoter? No, it don't mess up the money. It's just safety, and it's just like safety, and it's more, well, uh, yeah, that too. It could be that too, but it's almost like I learned to move like that. That's a better way of moving. Mm-hmm. That's a better way of moving because sometimes you get in touch with a promoter and they had y'all at barbershops and shit, swing y'all through here and there. <laughs> so now you just ain't got that much contact with me unless I know you like that. Mm-hmm. You know, not nothing against new promoters, but new promoters don't know what the nigga around him thinking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sometimes some promoters that I do hang around, we already know what's going on. I mm. kind of trust to be around them, but some promoters, I need to. When I see you at the venue, is when we gonna talk. Got you. I don't need to be. You don't need to be at the hotel lobby when I get that type of shit. Got you. <laughs> That's how I used to move. Right. You did. You super OG now, so it's a lot of comedians. They they looking up to you and uh, they want you to mentor them. And what are you in that space? Uh, and, and when you, if you are. Or if you have been, what do you tell them? What you how you feel about uh, mentoring new comics? Well, don't know comedian acts to really acts. They just really get around you, and uh, a comedian that wants some mentoring, they just gonna come around you. They just gonna come around you. They not gonna ask you shit. They just gonna come around you, and in between that time of them making themselves, making themselves. No, you know, making yourself known to you, you kind of going to figure them out. Either you're going to push them away at that point or not. So that's all it be, is who you allow to be around you. It's probably they'll get close enough and don't really want to be around your ass. So the mentoring is mutual almost. It's a mutual. I ain't going to be like, hey, man, all right, let me tell you something, smoking a cigarette. I'm going to mentor you, but you got to listen to me type of shit. Hell no. <laughs> it just be like a mutual thing. You be like, man, I fuck with you. Let me let me get some more of that little good weed you smoke. That shit is good. <laughs> I'm a mentor your ass, man. Because <laughs> you got the weed. You have to be in a comfortable situation. Yeah. Yeah, just he got to bring something to the table. Somewhat. In order to get your attention. It's, and it ain't like, gotta be a joke. They, they ne- no, it ain't gotta be a joke. It gotta be you. Like I might fuck around and say, God damn, call back to the club. Hey, yo, uh, yo, Tony, man, I left my book bag in that uh, green room. Can you can you get it and meet me? At, and he do that, and I'd be like, man, I'm a mentor of your ass, man. Appreciate that. Just because he brought my book bag and met up with me. So that's what it is. Let a little asshole ass talented bastard want to be a mentor. I'd be like, hell no, get your ass out of here. So just got to be cool. And anybody mentor you, because mentoring ain't nothing that you could really deny somebody that kind of like deserve it. As humans, we, we, we nice as humans. We be mean, but we all right. We all right. We'll do. <laughs> now, what you don't like about the business of, uh, of being a comic? What, what could you do without? Really? <laughs> I 
I can do without all the, the joke stealing and the unoriginality. I can do without that, but everything else is perfect to me. I love comedy. I've never had a bump in the road in comedy. I've never had no kind of, like, I don't know. I, I've always loved comedy. I started in my teens, so I don't think nothing need to change except for, I just, just nobody would like that. Like, I think just being more original people, like more original comics. And there, and there's some of them that's a lot of them that are, is original. I just I ain't talking about them. I just feel like comedy should stop slipping other people's material. People should stop stealing, you know. Just that. Even if you used to steal, quit. Like even if you have stole before, quit. Stop stealing. Like even if you steal, like make your way out of stealing. Like ease out of stealing. You know what I mean? It's, Wait. So you put it back. Yeah, put put, put, put the back. item back show. in the, you know, put the shit back. That's all. Because guess what? I enjoy comedy now. That's what it is. I enjoy it. Okay. So when I watch your dog ass up there. Okay. And you come ask me how you did, and I be like, damn, I ain't even watch you. If a nigga ever tell you he ain't watch you, it's because he tuned out on you. You tuned out as soon as you said that bullshit that you think you made up. Stop it. You a fuck if you did make it up. Stop saying it. It's already been said. I can't. Hey, y'all want to see my new iPhone I made up? You can't go make an iPhone. They already made the motherfucker. But I thought of it. Damn, you did. <laughs> Nigga, invent a fan. Mm. <laughs> now, what you say? What you say to that uh that comic that says, "Hey, uh, it don't matter if they stealing." In you know, it, it it ain't gonna get you nowhere, and so it, you really ain't. Um, it really it's really of no consequence. Ultimately, you're only hurting yourself. Uh, he is. Everywhere. That's that's true. He ultimately hurting himself because people tune out and people whisper behind your back, and it's not like it's me. I'm not gonna go around telling everybody you're a joke thief, but just be in rooms where people be like, "You're such a fucking hack, man." You know what I mean? Hey, in a it's room, the worst shit ever. In yeah. a room. In a room somewhere, yeah. you it won't hurt you. It ain't nothing gonna never happen. Yeah. But boy, they just wore your ass out just like that. Yeah, they brought you down all the way down to some levels, nigga, just like that. Mm. All because you got that jacket. <clears throat> yeah, that jacket, <clears throat> that goddamn thief, joke stealing jacket, like the snitch jacket in the nineties. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't mind having a snitch jacket now, but back in the nineties, you did not want that <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> A nigga choke his mammy out if she took like, Bitch, you called me a snitch hole. You gotta kill him. You gotta kill him. <laughs> nigga kick his niece right in the pussy. <laughs> Bitch, you called me a snitch hole. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want that snitch jacket back in the 90s, man. Yeah. You know, a nigga killed a detective back in the 90s in DT. He, he, the detective put in the hood that he was a snitch in the 90s. His name is Benny... Benny something, Google the story. They, they, in, D, in D.C., they put the detectives, he wouldn't do what the detective told him to do. So the detective put in the hood that he was a snitch. He ran in there and sprayed the ass inside the police station. They don't really tell that story. Google it while you're here. Just put it in D.C. His name was Benny, Benny something. He, uh, yeah, he killed them police. He killed them detectives. Went in there, killed about three of them. Walked out of that motherfucker. Think he's in prison or they killed his ass. I ain't read the last part. I mean, I read it, but I forgot it. But I, it, his name is Benny, though. I'm going to Google that shit. What's one of the biggest misconceptions about comedy to you? Uh, the best, big, biggest misconception is who is and who ain't a comedian. Like, people don't know that some people ain't really no comedian. That's one thing. That's a misconception. Did you find that shit? No? Or you ain't look for it? Okay, let me see. I got, I'm still looking for this nigga Benny, man. But anyway, fuck it. Find that Benny shit, man. <laughs> anyway, the biggest misconception is who is who, who? Funny is subjective, but good comedian, that shit ain't subjective. Funny is subjective. Who make you laugh is subjective. But fun, but 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 a good comedian, I can I can rate them for you, and this will be a fact. It's like rap. Who? Some people got good songs for you, but who put that shit together better? It could be some facts. We could, we could, we could, we could uh, line it up. 
we could get a good list. You feel me? I ain't saying it'll be there. Fact, 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 but you know what I mean? Who can create a joke? Who know how to come up with a good original joke that ain't never been told before? Like, that's a better comedian than this motherfucker. You know? That's a better comedian. Mm. Like, Bernie Mac is one of the funniest comedians. He's one of the funniest. But I don't know no joke he ever made up. I don't know one joke he ever made up that was all the way original. But he's funniest. If I do a top five funniest sets on TV, Bernie Mac top five. Funniest motherfuckers ever. Who else is in that top five funniest sets? Funniest sets on TV, I guess. You. Chris Tucker had a great set in this world. Yes, Pat William did. had a great set in this world. Which one? That first one, I think. The, the, the first one with that green suit. Or the one when he was on uh the green suit. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a great set in this world. Chris Tucker. <clears throat> you talking about Def Jam? Yeah, that Def Jam yeah. set. Even Bernie Mac. Bernie Mac ranking it. And uh Are you giving him Kings of Comedy or are you giving him uh 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 Def Jam? What you mean? The, uh, the, the, uh, Bernie Mac set from Kings of Bernie Com Mac Com set from uh King Bernie Mac sets were great. Bernie Mac had great sets. I can't think of a bad set except when he was in our Arsenio Hall. He bombed on that motherfucker. <laughs> but other than that, Bernie Mac had some great ass sets. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what's, uh, what's dope about when you get accomplished and shit, where people don't even really, a lot of people don't even remember when you actually bombed on some Oh, shit. yeah. I watched his ass go out there and talk regular and bomb. Yeah. Yeah. He talked regular. He went, hit him, but he went out there and said, hey, how you guys doing? And I was uh, yeah. in Chicago. He got too comfortable. Yeah. Man, get your ass out from up there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Soon as he came out with that regular voice with them little bit of that leg. Oh, yeah, like who is that? Get your ass out from up there. This ain't no goddamn Bernie Mac. That's but it was just, it was a new shit hey, before. Look, the nigga look it like was that new him. shit before though. Yeah. Plus his wife went on Oprah and was like, uh, talking about when Arsenio came to town, Bernie went opened up for him and did he said he didn't do well. And said Bernie went and bought all the joke books. And learn them all. Say he quit comedy for a year. That's what his wife quoted. But this ain't this ain't my quote. That's what she said. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, he did have a lot of little stock jokes. He's like, does pussy taste like pumpkin pie? <laughs> ain't no, ain't no pumpkin pie. Like that's an old ass stock yeah, joke. Yeah, right, and then right. the little he teasing me joke. You know what I mean? Yeah. He never really wrote any jokes. He just get up there and do his fucking thing, man. An amazing performer. Great. He's a great performance for yeah. a stand up. Hell yeah, shit. Two, two, you got two more slots. A great, um, uh, great sets on Jamie Foxx, Foxhole. That motherfucker got down, man. I, don't, I think that could be ranked in, for me, I think that's the number one stand up I've watched. I put Foxhole at number one stand up yeah. I've seen to make me laugh. I don't, I can't say it's the number one stand up all the time. Yeah. yeah. When I go to doing that, I throw Eddie in there. Even though I didn't laugh as hard. Eddie, as I did for Jamie Foxx. But tell him why with Jamie Foxx, because he don't really get a lot of, uh, it's very underrated. They go under the radar like a motherfucker. What you mean? Why Why was the Jamie Foxx Foxhole um, rated that for you? Why did it, why did it affect you? <laughs> because that nigga, that nigga used his entire body, and he, uh, he, uh, talked about them white folks, man. I ain't know really, I ain't really know much about white folks. He just knew. He knew how country they was. He knew the shit they would say. The nigga said, yeah, I heard you get that AIDS and uh, they get close to you and sprinkle that on you. He said, little gay dude, get close to you, sprinkle it on you, get skin of that mosquito dick. I was like, this nigga's stupid. <laughs> so I'm about 10, 11 years old watching this shit. I'm like, this nigga is stupid talking about AIDS. And he kept talking about AIDS. This nigga was stupid. <laughs> we was talking about AIDS early. <laughs> he kept talking about it. And you know, we were scared of AIDS in our age group. Nick. If you were born in the early 80s or some it shit. Was scary. He was scared of it. <laughs> you know, everybody had, every time I had sex, I thought I had AIDS. Yeah, they, they fucked us over with the AIDS. Yeah, yeah. They made us think, like, nigga, you gonna they, die from this shit. Yeah, you, even know, when, right. you, you, you might have on two condoms. <laughs> nigga got, you like, nigga, I'm, I'm Fuck a, me up every time. Yeah, I yeah. thought I had AIDS. I ain't never thought I had AIDS when I'm grown. But back nah, when I was younger, nah, I thought nah, I had AIDS yeah. all the time. Yeah. I used to be like, I probably got AIDS. I man. got to have it, because they say everybody got it. Damn. Fuck. <laughs> I used to, I used to sniff her. Yeah. Okay. I, I swear to God, I was 12, 13 years old. Like, I probably got AIDS. Yeah. 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 Oh. It, it was that fucking scary. <laughs> and they be having them <laughs> commercials too. <laughs> 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 
commercials? I know I kissed this girl named Monique when I was fifth grade. And bro, I just kept on thinking she probably got AIDS. I was like, this bitch probably got AIDS. I was 12, she was 12. I knew that bitch had AIDS. I be seeing on Facebook, family kids doing just great, but yeah. I still know that that bitch had AIDS when we were yeah. fifth grade. That bitch had AIDS, bro. <laughs> It's real talk. My mama said everybody had AIDS too back yeah. in the day. Yeah. My mama used to always say, the motherfucker probably got AIDS. Yeah. And then they'll try to scare you with them little statistics and shit. <laughs> like, and statistics say, is at least one of us in here got AIDS. I mean, you but probably, you pro but you probably do. I always thought that about you. What? <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I mean, you got I think my dog, Jack Thriller, ever since you slung that trench coat off and went to, I said, that boy got to have AIDS. <laughs> Anybody shake their ass in the comedy club like that, got to have AIDS. <laughs> Any nigga poke their eye out so they can get a bigger check, got to have AIDS. <laughs> Yo, that man got AIDS, man. <laughs> and, uh, Lil Duval used to say that shit all the time about me. That you had AIDS? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I, I didn't show my test results about five times. But you, but you always cover the name part up when you show it. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, your thumb be over there. I done took somebody, somebody test. <laughs> yeah, no, it ain't no, <laughs> it ain't no test. It's a shipping receipt from a warehouse. That nigga. You see that? It closed it up real fast like Chris Tucker and, and it. rush out. Yeah. LAPD. You see that? <laughs> what? Oh, shit. Yeah. He flashed that badge on real fast. Uh -huh. See that? Told you ain't have eight. Yeah. Told you ain't. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speak on that same t same topic and whatnot. When you when you you scared growing up because you think everybody got it, then you 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 have those type of relationships where they ask you for your results. Does that put a damper on the situation? Or does it that, 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 uh, turn you on even more? And you're like, yeah, man, she's just trying to make sure I'm safe. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a turn on. That's cool, shit. Yeah, yeah take you care of yourself. You always had your real. papers on you? No, I ain't always had my papers on me, but, <laughs> but you know, my when I checked my last bitches I had been fucking with, they was cool, so I figured I was cool, you know what I mean? No. <laughs> <laughs> I call, hey, Shirley, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I ain't with shit. I ain't a mile at you. I'm like, I'm you, oh, you ain't mad at me about nothing, right? I'm cool. Oh, okay, I'm cool. <laughs> no. I'm straight. That nigga crazy as hell, man. Yeah, I am straight. Nigga send that girl down there to go get the paperwork. Go down there and get tested. Come back. Don't look in the envelope. Look in the envelope. <laughs> Don't look in the envelope. Just bring it here. <laughs> get your ass in there. Dig, dig, dig. So, Doug, man, what's the what's next for you, my boy? Well, um, writing this show, man, is putting together this cartoon. That's one thing. I've been writing on that motherfucker lately, putting it together, developing. I've developed the characters and shit like that. Now I'm putting stories, more stories together, trying to figure out how I'm going to siphon this through. So I just got, basically, I ain't got too much longer to work on it, a couple weeks maybe. You you, uh, you, you incorporating um, Jimmy Jump in that? Uh... And, and tell Probably about so Jimmy because, Jimmy. to be honest with you, I haven't developed all the characters, but I'm finna build on these like five or six that's already developed. Finna mm -hmm. start shooting on it and probably introduce because you know the Simpsons got 51 characters, but I didn't know that. But yes, yeah, 51 characters. But before that, they didn't have that many. They just kind of grew. So I'm gonna develop about two or three more, about eight, and then try to write around it. But I've already wrote a few joints. That's why I said in about two weeks. If I was sitting here two weeks from now, I'd be to tell you nigga, I didn't shot some of this shit. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm working on. And Jimmy Jump is something that I ain't even brought in yet because it's probably about 15 characters already drew out. They just ain't developed. I don't know how old they is. I don't know where they from. I don't know what they character, what, what they like to do and what they is. Five or six of them I already know exactly who that is. I'm like, that's Jane. That's Bud. That's uh, Roly. And that's uh, Pressure. Mm. You feel me? Mm. I know exactly what Jane is from, San Mateo. California. Mm. Uh, Roly is from the Bronx, New York. You know, so once I get past this little process, because this is like my first time, but hell, it ain't really my first time because we've been shooting it. We've been shooting shit since we was since fucking 
25 years, 24 years ago. Mm. So it's almost like with me having these these relationships with, with networks for real. Mm. I ain't putting no shit on no phone. I'm let them little 22 year old kids shoot some shit on their phone. I need to put this shit on network. Mm. Cause that ain't even what I really want to do. I just got people around me now that want to do that. And I'm a great writer. I just don't want to write. You got to pay me to write. And these motherfuckers paying me to write. Mm -hmm. Even though it's my shit too, they mm -hmm. still paying me. So the oh whole boy. the whole time I've been out here, I want it my way. I do it. The, like, I ain't just saying this on no arrogant shit. I always wanted to do my... If I had to stand in line and do a movie, I'm not going to do a movie. You just got to bring me a fucking movie. And I mm -hmm. read and do it. But I'm not. I'm not doing nothing for nothing. If, I, if my career don't go to the next level, just just know I got paid for everything I did do. I ain't doing nothing for nothing. I'm like a howling wolf. I ain't doing shit for shit. And you ain't got to give me no extra. So this show here I'm finna create, that I am creating right now, it's going to go somewhere because I got so many different avenues. Shit. When did you get in that mindset right there? Because that's a, a real business mindset. Shit, I've been in this mindset, but the thing is I was waiting on a, a, little, a, little, a little mentor to walk up. Nigga that I can mentor and they want to do this kind of shit. And these motherfuckers particularly ain't nobody I'm mentoring. Shit, they want to do it too. So boom, we finna split it this way. I, ain't nobody ever called me at the gas station and said, Dub, I want to write a script. And I want this, even though that ain't how it happened, I know this motherfucker been doing this. And I'm like, yo, we got to put something together because I ain't finna do what you doing, sitting there typing. And I ain't finna come up with no stories. And I ain't finna come up with all this. But I can help you shape whatever it is you already doing. Mm. You know what I mean? Kind of like, you gonna do what you been doing, but I'm gonna shape your ass like, I'm gonna shape your ass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shape the shit out you. Right. You did mm. Like motherfucking, uh, what's the nigga name? <laughs> what's the Elvis Presley manager? Oh. Uh, Colonel Parker. Colonel Parker. <laughs> I want 50%. Motherfucker. I want 50%. He, did, he, he was a piece of he shit. He was a piece of shit and a half, man. You ever had a, you ever had a manager like that that was close to that? But you, the, but you did. Kelsey, you were running Jordan manager. Ah, but you did. But you did. I known a lot of killers since they was kids. Looking at that nigga. You did. Kelsey was goddamn taking. <laughs> Man, one time I wound up over that nigga. I was like, man, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Ronnie Jordan, y'all got me fucked up, man. Man, hell no. If you ran the hell away from Kelsey, <laughs> Thriller say, yay, yay. Yay, yay. <laughs> man, I left that nigga there running. Ronnie, I'm sorry about your friend, but boy, that nigga there, he was a psychopath, nigga. Psycho. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what did success one. mean to you, though? Shit, I was successful when I got on Coming View. I wore everybody's ass out that I ever known at that point. That was back in August of 02. When mm. they gave me my little tape, I, I got 10, 20 copies of that tape and sent it back to the hometown. Mm. And everybody showed everybody. So that was success. Shit. At this point, what does it look like? It's, it's still the same thing, man, because guess what? This nigga's doing less than me that's doing better than me that's doing less than me. So I don't know where I that's I don't know where I rank. So I'm just doing well. A lot of people didn't die. You know, so what more can I ask for? I'm dead ass serious, bro. Like, if you wanna give me all that, no, that shit like having a nice ass black truck or a Bugatti. You'd be like, this black truck was nice. You know what I mean? Like, mm. cause that's what I'll take a black truck. You know what I mean? I guess. At 43 years old, ten million dollars. What do you do with it? You get it. You get it in cash tomorrow. Ten million dollars in cash. Ten million dollars. Do you still do comedy? What does your life look like? Well, with ten million dollars at this right where I'm at right now, I probably would. I probably move from where I'm at. That's for damn sure. I'll move from where I'm at first okay. and foremost, and then I at this age. Yeah. I, I, I'll i definitely uh, help out a lot of family. I help out a lot of family at this age. Now, I yeah. probably would have did it the wrong way back then, but I'll definitely make sure a lot of family members straight. You know how to responsibly help people without I know family? how to responsibly help people, and I'll definitely help them. Okay. And they going to be like, after 10 years, 20 years, they're going to be like, man, that nigga, yeah. But, you know, right off, they may not like the way, but I'll definitely have a better way of helping them. Do you still do comedy? 
Hell yeah. Shit me. Fucking right. I don't give a fuck. You give me a hundred million. I was just thinking that, like, maybe I didn't raise it up a little bit more. Man, hell no. Nah. You, you give me a trillion. I'm going to be a trillionaire comedy doing motherfucker. You Tracy Morgan out here. Well, shit. I, yeah, I guess he got all the millions. He's still on there. He's still on the ass. Fucking right, though, man. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Like, why wouldn't I? Shit. What, what the hell are you talking about? I would want all the days. I would want 52 weeks then. I wouldn't not want them 52 weeks, even if you just got to give me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. 100%. I would need to do three, I want to do six, eight shows a motherfucking weekend. Got you. Everywhere for the rest six of my life. Show. Yeah, but then I take a week off to go somewhere, but I want to get right on back out here. John Witherspoon type shit. Boy, yes. Big. Fucking right. Comedy on the stage in different places. <laughs> Nigga, I give you some money to do that. If I had 100 million, I'd give you 10 million to set that up. Do you own your own comedy club, or do you need that? Are you? I get if I had enough was just too much. I would uh, I would definitely have a little box over there. You know, I like shit. You see, our tip got trapped city. That's his own comedy club. That's right, one hundred percent. He coming in, and go on stage every time, stay up there as long as he want to. That's his own comedy, and he's selling food, and he doing all kind of other shit in there, rap shit that he like to do. Mm. Comedy club, rap club. He keeps some rap shit going on. <laughs> it's rap shit right after the comedy shit. Like, why the fuck is the rap shit coming behind my shit? That nigga doing the rap shit right behind the comedy show. As soon as I get off stage, they be like, all right, open mic to the DJ booth. All everybody report to the DJ booth. Artists to the DJ booth. Rapping right behind me. He can't let rap go, man. <laughs> T tell them what you got coming up next, uh, K Dub, and what they need to be looking out for. <laughs> we, um, this ain't gonna be your last time here, man. I really en enjoyed this, man. We gotta come back and give him some more stories. Look how you looking over here like you really can see me. That shit it's crazy, <laughs> man. That shit crazy. That nigga Hollywood in hell, bro. That nigga with it, bro. You a real nigga. Like I'm Varnell. <laughs> I'm Varnell Hill in the <laughs> In the Trap, man. Grand Hustle presents In the Trap. That shit coming out, man. Coming out soon. It's already shot. We already shot it. I don't know where it's coming out. I'll make sure y'all check out Departments. That shit's still on there. It's, still, it's on All Black. Check that shit out. And uh, my son just made that uh, little AA, little, uh, little yeah. club, club soccer, little club soccer team, man. He old man. I'm proud of him. My other, my other son. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Appreciate you. My other son just uploaded his first video that he – Shot and directed on YouTube. I'm this the proud. one that's gonna take care of you. No, the other one that plays soccer. That's well, both of them. What the fuck is you asking me, man? <laughs> yeah, you talking about? Anyway, I just want the best way. You stupid as hell, man. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's what I got going on. You know, my daughter in and out of rehab. You know, mm -hmm. that's crazy. But yeah, that's what I got going on. And my other son, I think he got his uh. I think he got his uh, little girlfriend pregnant, so shit. Man, like, congratulations, bro. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Why you stop clapping? Clap for that shit. Fuck it. Yeah. It's life, man. This it's song motherfucking will continue. life. You did? Yeah. But either way it go. Uh, you somebody granddaddy now. I don't know. I ain't sure yet. Yeah. I done had two or three. That's that his baby, nine. man. I believe. I trust him. I know you probably want it to be, man. You got any kids yet? No. Damn. That's crazy. You a nasty ass old nigga with no kids, bro. How you ain't got no kids, bro? Like, like not even a little daughter or nothing. <laughs> what does that say about a nigga that don't got no kids at 42? He's either, he, is this one, two, he's either gay or he's a homosexual. He gay or a homosexual. Or, he bi or, or he's bisexual like or P. Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Whichever way floats your it's boat. It's one of the three, though. It's one of the three, okay. man. I'm telling you. So. It's sure enough. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey, you might hey. want to go and get on out there, man. Hey, I, DJ Finn is going to take us out. Let's take some pictures, man. Hell <laughs> <laughs> a K-Dub Walker, baby. Uh, <laughs>